I won't be seduced by you. Do I want you to seduce me? Is that what I actually am trying to tell you? Do I what? Even though I'm not Dustin Hoffman or George Michael, even I am not immune to the seductive charms of the new Maserati Gran Turismo. Costing as much as a one bedroom inner city flat, the 2 plus 2 Italian Gran Turismo is chasing exquisite cars like the Porsche 911 Carrera 4S and Bentley Continental GT. Adding to a stunning back catalogue that stretches even further back than Germany's finest, does the second generation Gran Turismo have the brains and the brawn to match its stunning beauty? My name is Byron Methydarkis for carsguy.com.au and I'm here to find out exactly that. Beauty at this level does not come cheap. The base model is the Modena, which kicks off from $375,000 before on road costs, while there's also the top of the line Trofeo at 450,000 big ones. This puts the range smack bang in the middle of several other high-end 2 plus 2 sports coupes besides the 911 and Conti GT, such as the Aston Martin Vantage, Mercedes AMG GT and BMW M8 Competition. That's quite the variety there. Anyway, as you'd probably expect, the Gran Turismo is a pretty lavishly presented and equipped proposition. Yet yeah, it's the sheer modernity of the Torinese icon that might catch you by surprise, until you learn that there's also a cutting edge and completely electric Folgori version that's also coming to Australia sometime in the new year. And you know what? There's a real sense of that thinking, with a pair of sizable digital display screens, one ahead of the driver, and a 12.3 inch touchscreen to the center, as well as a smaller 8.8 inch climate control display that opens up like a tablet. You'll also find a 360 degree view camera, a head up display, a digital rear view mirror, high end premium audio, and an Android based multimedia setup offering Alexa assistance, Hey Maserati voice control, and even a Wi Fi hotspot. And then there's a repurposed traditional analog clock, which is perched up on top of the dash as both an analog look timepiece, as well as a performance telemetry screen that best juxtaposes the classic with the contemporary. That and the long list of adaptive driver assist safety systems, which I'll touch on in the safety section later on, as well as the standard air suspension and adaptive dampers, all underline the Gran Turismo's security, luxury and comfort yang to its supercar performance ying. But you know what? No matter how many more features or more performance the Maserati's competitors have over the Gran Turismo, it possesses one luxury no other quite manages as naturally, and that's supermodel looks. For this generation, the Gran Turismo uses the Giorgio platform found in the acclaimed Alfa Romeo Giulia. This time around, they've lengthened the car, it's a little bit wider than before, but the proportions pretty much stay the same because this is a beautiful, timeless design. The body is 65% uh, alloy in construction um, and the weight distribution front to rear is 52 to 48. So that's made specially like that for improved dynamic capabilities. It's such a gorgeous design. And you know, in the 75 years that Maserati has been building supercar style two plus two coupes, um, like timeless design has been an absolute prerequisite. And I reckon the Gran Turismo totally nails it. Okay, in typical two plus two GT style, the front has plenty of space, like heaps of leg room and quite a lot of headroom and um, lots of uh, adjustability and a great driving position. But the back seat is a little bit tight. Um, the fit and finish is first class. It feels expensive in this car. Now this is the base Modena here, so, um, but you still get a large center touch screen, a digital instrumentation that's multi-adjustable, um, and pretty much every multimedia and car vehicle accessory you would expect for $375,000. Um, 
it just has the aura and the ambience of a high performance car. So um, they've really succeeded. Um, I guess there's not much to criticize really. Uh, storage is a little bit limited. Um, vision out is a little bit tight. I'm sitting lower than usual, but um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's pretty limited, the uh, all round vision. But being a coupe, it's got my favorite coupe feature. And that is frameless doors. So it makes it easier to get in and out. Well done, Maserati. Plus, it's practical inside here because there's 270 litres of available boot space. Um, the, the rear seat doesn't fold, but there is a ski hatch and probably enough length and width for your golf clubs or if you're a gangster, a mobster body, whatever. It's not just a sexy body that Maserati makes because this particular three litre twin turbo V6 is pretty much exactly the same engine that you'll find in the MC20 supercar. Called the Nichino, it isn't quite in the performance league as the GT's mid-engine two-seater sibling, but with up to 410 kilowatts of power and 650 newton meters of torque shuffled between all four wheels via an eight-speed ZF automatic, it's a spine-tingling symphony of speed and total jailbait, given the Trofeo's 320 km an hour VMAX. To help keep all that in check, the Gran Turismo also deploys double wishbones up front, a multi-link independent rear suspension setup, along with the aforementioned air suspension, which is a nice nod to history, as French car maker Citroen used to own Maserati. That's what the M stood for in the hydro-pneumatically suspended Citroen SM GT of that period that somehow the Gran Turismo also evokes in my mind. But I digress. Anyway, there's also a lot of Ferrari thinking going on under here, which isn't a surprise considering the Italian supercar brand's long and intimate association, though they were once mortal enemies as well. Oh, and Citroen is now again also part of Maserati's wider family group, the Stellantises. A rich tapestry then, which, when it all comes down to it, helps provide a cohesive and oh-so-memorable driving experience which we were very fortunate enough to try out on an open racetrack here at the Talim Bend facility in Adelaide. Roll the tape. The moment of truth. I'm behind the wheel of the Gran Turismo in top of the line Trofeo, guys, and I'm about to let this thing rip. Now, I've got to say that one of my favorite cars over the last 10 years has been the Alfa Romeo Giulia. Um, that of course debuted the Giorgio platform which this car sits upon and it's a really really solid foundation for a sports car because the um, the uh, quadrifoglio version of the Giulia the more power that that uh, platform got the better that car felt and it just absolutely shone its brightest as a BMW M3 competitor. It, it, in fact, it seemed like it was crying out for more power. So, I mean, of course, this is highly modified in this case, um, underpinning the uh, the Gran Turismo. But oh, I've got to tell you, this thing is exceptional. Um, look, you won't be surprised to know that uh, the uh, MC20 three-liter twin-turbo V6 absolutely goes like the clappers. I mean, it's got startling acceleration uh, down to 3.5 seconds to 100 in this particular case. Um, and it, the power just piles on, um, no matter whether you're in comfort, in GT mode, or uh, sport, or around here, Corsa. Now I'm driving this in sport mode, uh, so you can't really hear how um, powerful it is, but it absolutely just rockets off the line. Oh, maybe you can hear it now as I accelerate away. Anyway, it absolutely rockets off the line um, and the steering comes alive in your hands. Like, it's a bit playful. Um, certainly around here, um, the, the rear lets go, but let, let goes, but you can catch it. Um, it's got superb brakes and a level of body control that is amazing. If I had to place it between uh, two of its competitors set, I would say that uh, it feels somewhere between maybe a Bentley Continental GT and the Porsche 911. 
which shouldn't surprise you. I mean, it isn't quite a Porsche 911 um, RS Carrera, uh, Carrera uh, S4, but it certainly <laughs> goes like one and it handles well enough. Um, now, the Bentley connection uh, or analogy comes through the fact that um, it seems to have a particularly good ride as well. Um, of course, air suspension and adaptive dampers help, um, but also the fact that it just is a taut and tight machine. Around here, it absolutely uh, blows my mind. I love it. I love it. Um, it, it, it I, I, I guess that Italian supercar DNA comes shining through, um, and it takes that Giorgio architecture um, uh, goodness to a new and higher level. Absolutely adore it. I can't wait to drive this on Australian public roads. You know, for a super coupe that can easily exceed 300 kilometers an hour, the Gran Turismo is pleasingly efficient with a combined average figure of 10.2 liters per 100 kilometers. Top that 70 liter tank with premium unleaded petrol and you might even average over 680 kilometers between refills if you can restrain yourself from poking the bear under the bonnet. How's that possible? Clean aero efficiency for a start, along with that predominantly aluminum body that helps keep the weight down to an impressive 1.8 tons, which all bodes really well for next year's Folgori EV version, since that can also hit 100 in just 2.7 seconds on the way to 325 kilometers an hour. Bring that on. It may come as a shock to learn that supercar coupes like this aren't crash tested by Euro ANCAP or ANCAP for that matter, so there's no safety rating. But most of the advanced driver assist tech you see or can think of is present and active in the Gran Turismo. And don't forget about that super strong body, massive Brembo brakes and trick air suspension that help keep everything grounded. Check out my written review at carsguide.com.au to find out more. Maserati offers a frankly disappointing three-year unlimited kilometre warranty, which is on the stingier side of things. Service intervals are also every 12 months or 10,000 kilometres. There's no cap price servicing, but Maserati does offer a prepaid maintenance program that covers all of the inspections and components and consumable replacements as detailed in the car's maintenance schedule. Now, I read that from the press release. Find out more on the company's website. There's a famous line in a Hollywood movie that somebody's ego is writing checks that its body simply can't cash. In the Gran Turismo's case, its agility, performance, ride, handling, and overall refinement means that it absolutely delivers on the promise. I can't wait to get this outside on public Australian roads, but until then, this thing has certainly seduced me. Don't forget, you can read the full review at carsguide.com.au. And as always, thanks for watching.